Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the HBR A3 Assault Rifle. This is the weapon that, during my time playing at Gamescom in Germany, I thought it was going to be the most popular gun in Advanced Warfare. I thought this is going to be the one that people were really going to gravitate toward, but it turned out not to be the case, but it's still a strong weapon. So let's get started with the damage. It'll deal 40 to 24 damage per shot. That's going to be 40 damage up close, but it'll, the damage will decrease over distance down to a minimum of 24, which for you means it will take between three and five shots to kill depending on range however at the 24 damage at maximum distance that means if the enemies hurt just a little bit if they've been flashed stunned if they've maybe taken another shot from somebody else it's going to be more like a four shot kill just keep that in mind but if they're purely undamaged it'll be between three and five shots to kill depending on your range and uh, headshots will deal 1.1x extra damage or 10% extra damage it's just a little scalar I think almost all of the assault rifles have the 1.1x damage damage modifier for headshots, which is not going to allow you to get a two-shot headshot up close, but can change your headshots at longer ranges. So squeezing in a headshot at a different, at a distance is going to cause it to be one less shot to kill. What you're looking at right now is the maximum range of the three shot to kill, which is, it seems like it's really far, but compared to some of the other assault rifles, I wouldn't say it's that impressive. I would say it has a pretty medium damage drop-off range, but again, that is its three shot kill potential maximum range without anything like a silencer, or advanced rifling, or any sort of unusual barrel attachments but it also has an unusual rate of fire like many of the guns in this game it has a variable rate of fire the normal rate of fire is 600 rpm which is actually quite low for assault rifles making it one of the slowest firing assault rifles in the game and one of the slower firing assault rifles in call of duty history aside from of course the semi-automatics however the first three rounds in the burst fire at 650 rpm i thought this gun was going to be more like the black ops 2 an94 and the first couple of shots would shoot it like nine and then it would drop off to 600. Unfortunately, the first three rounds here only fire at 650, and then it drops off to 600. It's not a very significant drop. It, I mean, it kills a little bit faster, but it's not as crazy as the AN-94, unfortunately. And next up, I feel that it is important to talk about accuracy and the foregrip. What you're watching right now is a live test of the regular H-Bar, I keep wanting to say H-Bar because I'm used to it from previous Call of Duty games, the HBR A3, fully automatic with no foregrip whatsoever, and you can see that the recoil is actually kind of bad. A lot of people consider this to be a very accurate gun because they most often use it with foregrip, which when you see when you put the foregrip on it, it is extremely effective. It completely and radically changes the accuracy profile of the gun and allows it to be very accurate, again, without the foregrip pretty much much straight vertical. I guess it's kind of easy to control and that it's vertical, it doesn't go side to side too much, but foregrip is definitely going to be the way to go in assault rifle. I mean on this assault rifle, I mean just just look at the spread there. It, it's it's very clear the the accuracy difference that you get. The other accuracy profile we can look at is its hip fire performance, which is the standard spread and size of all the other assault rifles, regardless of what the COD wiki or some other things will say. It has the same hip fire spread as the other assault rifles. Unfortunately, its hip fire effectiveness is very poor because it has a low RPM. Shooting at only 600 RPM means your bullets are going to be coming kind of slow. At least it's a three shot kill and not a four shot like the AK 12, which we also discussed. But I don't find it likely that you're going to be able to hip fire too many people, or at least not win very many hip fire battles, not against submachine guns or the BAL or something like that. Next up, we need to talk about the iron sights, which are just plain awful. The iron sights on this gun are some of the worst that I've had to deal with in Call of Duty history. They're kind of neat looking in that they're diamond shape, and you would think that they would be kind of easy to use, but the... Uh, that the foregrip the foresight is just very large and it, it blocks a lot of stuff and it also has a muzzle flash when i shoot the muzzle flash and smoke is kind of strong overall it just makes it very difficult for me to track and hit my targets and i highly recommend that you do not use the iron sights and if you do at least put a silencer or something on there so you can get rid of that really nasty muzzle flash Moving out of the subjective parts of in-depth and on to the more numerical parts, it has a fast reload of 1.4 seconds and a slow reload of 2.0 seconds to 2 seconds flat. That depends on if you have bullets in the magazine or not and if you're double or single tapping the reload button. This is actually a little bit on the slow side for assault rifles. Among the ones that I've measured, most of them reload considerably faster than this, so do keep in mind that the HBR reloads a little bit slower. The raise and drop times are also a little bit slow. The raise time is 1.53 
three seconds, which means it takes a little bit longer to pull out. Makes it not a very good backup weapon if you're running overkill or if you really need to you know, break it out like super fast or something. The drop time is actually pretty swift at 0.55 seconds or about half a second. Actually, a lot of the assault rifles are kind of giving me this fairly quick put away time. I think they really are kind of designed for you to have secondary weapons. Overall mobility or run speed is 90%. This is standard for all of the assault rifles in the class. Nothing really different or special about that. Not as fast as SMGs, but not bad. On the variants on this weapon, this is a little something that I'm hesitant to talk about because in all my time playing, I have not unlocked a single HBR A3 variant. However, we've already covered all of the different uh, attributes and stats in the variant episode. In the next one, which I'm going to announce, I'll tell you what mobility does. And looking at that and knowing what I know about the gun and its profile and how it performs and how those things works, I'm going to say the best variants that you can get for this weapon are the Average Joe, the Insanity, and the Raider. These are typically increasing range, rate of fire, damage, and punishing other things like handling or mobility or some minor things that aren't really such an issue on the HBR. So those are the ones you want to go for. Some of the other ones are really not so hot. As far as how I think the HBR should be used, I feel that it is best at medium ranges and used in short bursts or at least hap firing it. It's not something that I've done a whole lot in this episode because I'm not used to it. I'm not just not used to treating it like the AN-94, but it's pretty nasty at medium range. The burst, uh, uh, the, the first couple rounds of the burst can compete with the BAL on rate of fire. It's not as fast as the BAL, so you'll lose, but it's on par. Accuracy is pretty on point when you run the foregrip. It has pretty low accuracy when it shoots slower, and the three-shot kill range is pretty good. However, it's a little bit slow to be used up close. The hip fire is a little bit bad, so I wouldn't use it in close quarters combat. And I also wouldn't use it at extremely long ranges because the recoil is a little bit bad at that range and it's pretty much outclassed by the IMR and the AK-12. However, medium range is going to be the way to go for the HBR. If you like assault rifles and you want something just for medium range, not up close or far away, HBR is going to be the way to go. And my preferred attachments go as such. I prefer the autofocus sight on this one. I feel it's a slightly longer ranged gun you know, medium, maybe medium long. So autofocus floats my boat on that one, red dot, some kind of optical attachment, whatever kind of optical attachment that you like, and then pick one of the following. If you're going to be using it in the closer end of the medium spectrum, if you feel that you need extra reaction time, use the quick draw grip that'll allow you to aim down sights faster. I found it pretty practical on the H-bar. And the foregrip, you, I would say pick that one if you're going to go for long ranges, if you really just kind of want to pick people off, if you're going to be on the longer side of the medium to long. And lastly, I feel that it goes pretty well with a silencer. If you want to use the iron sights for whatever reason, you're going to need that. And the silencer doesn't seem to hurt the, the range or the damage over range too much. I used it a bit in this video, so I found that to be a pretty practical attachment as well. So I don't feel that this is a good one for a primary gunfighter. So I'll just say pick an optical attachment and then pick one of those three below it. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something useful. The previous episode is on my stealthy prone trick. You can click that box on the left, it'll open a new window. The next episode is going to be on mobility weapon variants. That's, I finally figured out what mobility does. We're going to be talking about that next on In-Depth. You can click that box and it'll open up whenever it's live. And as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.